We are going to be fabricating a hand-based radial gutter. So this orthosis can include one finger or multiple fingers. It can include one joint or multiple joints. So today we are going to include the index and middle finger and we're going to extend it all the way to include all the joints. So first we'll start out with the pattern. We're gonna poke a thumb hole over the thumb. And then you want to position the patient in intrinsic plus position. This is full extension of the IP joints and flexion of the NP joints. On the dorsal of the hand, you want to palpate the metacarpals. So we're including the index and the middle finger. So we're going to mark after the middle finger and extend it out. And then we're going to mark at the wrist. For the volar side, we're going to do the same thing, palpate between the middle and ring fingers. And then the base of the thenar eminence and around the wrist. When your materials are ready, you're first going to fabricate it around the thumb. So you wanna roll it out far enough to where you're not limiting any motion of the thumb. Then you can tag the material around the fingers. Again, for this one, we're just doing index and middle finger. You want to position them in intrinsic plus, which again is full IP extension and MP flexion. You want to get a good fit in the palm. And again, be sure the thumb will not be limited by the material. For this one, I am going to close it over the end of the digits, but you can leave it open if you would like. Some patients prefer to have it open and some prefer to have it closed. You also wanna watch the deviation of the digits, so you don't want to put them in radial or ulnar deviation. You want them to be in neutral, unless the diagnosis specifies otherwise. Once the material is cool and you're ready to mark where you want to trim, you can bring it straight down between the fingers that are included and not included to the thenar eminence, the base of the thenar eminence. And then this is hand base, so we want to be sure to leave the wrist free. And then same thing on the back, we wanna make sure the metacarpal is covered, but we don't want anything past that. So I'll bring that straight down as well. Here's the orthosis after it has been trimmed. So you do want to open up the area here between the digits that are included and the digits that are not included so that it does not limit the adjacent finger or rub against it. On the sides, you're gonna bring them straight down and then round the corners. And then for Velcro, we're gonna do a big strap here on the dorsum of the hand, and then two thin ones for the fingers. You can also do two smaller ones for the fingers if you prefer. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the strap for the volar part of the hand. So you're going to take a thick strap like this and fold it here and you're going to cut out a triangle. And then you'll fold it a little bit further and cut the bottom sides of the diamond that you just formed. 
And then I always like to round the edge here. And then with this, you can hook it around the thumb hole. So that you have one last piece of Velcro and then it'll come around to the dorsum of the hand and attach there. So here is the final product. Again, you can leave out the fingertips if you want to. Sometimes the patients prefer to have them out. Sometimes they want them covered. This strap here, you'll bring around the dorsum of the hand and attach at the back. The finger strap comes around here. You wanna have them wiggle their adjacent fingers to make sure it's not limiting motion or rubbing anywhere. And then you also wanna make sure they have full wrist flexion and extension.